My name is Richard, and I am a husband to a beautiful wife and the happy father of an eight-year-old boy, Thomas. I work from home as a freelancer in the software field, and my wife Lauren is a teacher at our local high school. Since my wife usually works late hours, it's me who takes care of Thomas during the day and helps him with his homework. I enjoy nothing more than spending time with him, but it can get tough when deadlines are approaching. The day Thomas introduced Henry and Marie to me, I was happy. It seemed like he had finally made his first real close friends. They told me their parents had moved here about a month ago and lived in a house down the street. Henry was in the same class as Thomas and Mary was a year younger. I let the kids spend the rest of the day playing outside in the backyard. That way I could have an eye on them and make sure they weren't in any danger. I met Mrs. Green briefly one evening when she came to get her kids. It wasn't long before Lauren invited the Greens over for dinner to get to know them. They were a friendly and educated couple in their early 40s. The two of them had waited to have kids to focus on their respective careers. John Green was a lecturer at a university. His wife Lisa was a department manager at a pharmaceutical company. We got along quite well and were all happy that our kids enjoyed playing together. From that day onward, Thomas was often staying at the Green's house and played with Henry and Marie. Lisa and John had assured me that things would be alright. They had an elderly maid who'd picked the kids up after school and watched over them till they got home. It wasn't long before Thomas first told us about Doggy, the family dog of the Greens. From his tales, it sounded like the dog was huge, so we assumed it was a St. Bernard or a similar type of big dog. The dog was kept inside in an indoor kennel because he was sick at the time and not allowed to go outside. The conversation soon shifted to other topics like school and games. During the next few weeks, he would continue to talk about the dog. He seemed to adore him and tell us about petting him and playing with him. My wife and I started to consider getting him a puppy for his birthday. The weird thing was is that I'd never seen the dog. I'd been over a couple of times to pick up Thomas in the evening or drop off Henry and Marie. Sure, my son had told me the dog was staying inside, but still it seemed a bit odd. Maybe the dog was very old and didn't move much. I mean, I don't know a thing about dogs anyways. One day, not too long ago, my son seemed to be really sad. He told me he was worried about Doggy. From what I understood of his ramblings, the old chap seemed to be quite sick. Doggy didn't even get up to play with him anymore. Thomas pleaded with me to have a talk with the Greens about Doggy and I assured him that I would. I hate to admit it, but I pushed it off. It wasn't that I ignored it, but at the time deadlines were coming up and I was overwhelmed with work. Looking back now, I wish I would have acted sooner. Three days later, my son came home crying. He came running into my room and threw himself into my arms. I was surprised to see him since he was supposed to play at the Green's place that afternoon. He told me that Doggy had gotten free and had bitten him. I was alerted right away and when I saw the bloody wound on his arm, I drove him to the hospital right away. The doctor informed me that it was only a tiny wound and everything would be fine. He questioned me about the origin of the injury and I noticed how concerned he seemed. I told him that it was from a neighbor's dog that had attacked my son. What the doctor told me still makes me shiver. The small bite marks on Thomas's arm didn't resemble those of a dog. Instead, it had a striking semblance to those of a human being. The cops were called right away. What they found at the Greens' house that afternoon was terrible. Doggy was not a dog at all. The Greens must have kidnapped a young man and held him captive for whatever twisted reason. He was missing his tongue and vocal cords so he couldn't speak or make sounds at all. His hands were mutilated and utterly useless. The poor guy wasn't even able to stand up anymore due to the damage that had been done to his muscles and tendons. I never saw what they did to his face, but I heard it barely resembled that of a human being anymore. That wasn't the worst of it, though. They had dressed the guy in a sort of a dog costume and kept him in some kind of cell in the basement. When the cops came over to get our statement, it took some time to convince Thomas that he wasn't in trouble. The police said they needed his help to find out a little more about Doggy and why he had bitten him. Of course, we didn't tell him what was really going on. He told us that Marie and Henry had found Doggy by accident. Their parents kept the basement door locked at all times. It was off limits. One day, though, the kids discovered that there was a secret way to enter the basement. It was later confirmed to be due to a construction error. 
When they weren't home one day, the kids secretly went down there to explore. The room Doggy was in had no light, and he was kept in what the kids thought of as an indoor kennel. The kids assumed he was down there because he was sick and their parents were trying to help him get better. They said that their parents often did similar things. Thomas remembered that they had told him to keep it a secret. They'd get into trouble if their parents found out they were down there. He said he had to tell his parents about Doggy. It was stupid he wasn't allowed to talk about him, especially since he liked him so much. When the police asked if the maid knew anything about it, Thomas said she was easy to trick. They would tell her that they'd play upstairs and waited until she was busy with the housework. I later heard from the police what must have happened that day and how lucky my son had been. Thomas, Marie, and Henry had snuck into the basement once again to play with Doggy. At that time, the man was suffering from high fever and multiple infected wounds. He was completely delirious. He didn't react to the kids anymore, so they opened the kennel to see if he was alright. That's when he saw his chance and went rampage. He first went for Thomas, who was closest. Luckily, he wasn't able to fully operate his jaw anymore, only giving him a shallow bite wound. This allowed Thomas to get away. Henry and Marie weren't that lucky. The girl was beaten to death. The boy was maimed beyond recognition and still in critical condition. In his frenzied state, the man had then thrown himself against a locked door until it broke open. In the course, he had severely bruised multiple parts of his own body. Then he attacked the poor maid who had come down to the basement door because she'd heard the kid's screams. She survived with only light injuries but suffered severe head trauma. She was still unconscious when the police arrived. The tortured man didn't get far. He collapsed and died right there in the Green's backyard. Mr. and Mrs. Green were arrested on the same day. I heard they were both charged with murder. They are under investigation in at least two other cases of missing people. The motive for their actions, as well as the identity of the man that Thomas referred to as Doggy, is yet unknown.